who all manages finances finance here if i to ask who all manages finances in some way or the other come on when i say managing finance is not really making a book or making a cash book or a pass book or uh, you know maintaining a ledger but in general terms you know we 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 manage finance some way or the other come on i believe even kids manage finance yes or no yeah right so it's going to be on those important aspect you know like uh, there are many pointers that we would learn throughout this this series which we can actually as i said practically apply in our day to day life you know and also felt when i was praying over the concept you know god really uh, god really uh, told me that saying that this is something we have to do at this stage of our church you know when i said this stage we are growing church you know we are very uh, a very young church even in the in the age category or as far as the numbers are concerned you know it's very necessary that we learn something at the very initial stage you know rather than learning it very hard way when we are maybe a 5000 church or 5000 member church or 10000 member church all right so so let's make it very interactive you know that's what i expect you know it's i know it's re- getting recorded uh it's going online but let's make it more interactive let's make it more uh, fun learning all right all right so before starting any any of those things okay let me ask you how are you guys doing good you guys okay you guys okay to bear me for another 45 minutes to 50 minutes yes yes zal doesn't look convincing <laughs> all right okay so so uh can we can we quickly pray can we uh can we just uh just submit the whole uh topic into god's hand you know we we are not trying to uh put a put a put a show or we're not trying to do a performance here but you know this is something that god has god want us to learn in this season you now let's 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 pray and submit that you know god you take control over this you take control and you teach us every single aspect that you want us to understand in this time come on church god thank you for this time lord thank you for the ideas that you have provided us lord lord pre- we pray that everything that we're going to discuss here tonight you know would be would be something that we can practically use lord we something that we can take back and you know look back in our own personal life lord well thank you for everything that you have done so far in this week lord we believe that that your grace is upon us you know today tomorrow and forever thank you jesus in jesus name we pray amen amen finance god's way uh now i i am someone who works within the finance industry or i would say uh, my daily work is associated with finance which means i look around uh, basically how the how does finance works totally you know in the world you know how all the markets or all the stock markets probably you know those are the technical term that we use when it comes to finance industry now it's way different when we look through god's way you know it's way uh, it is totally opposite when we understand it from god's point of view um i'll throw back the same question to you guys come on can you raise your hands and tell me have you do you guys have some experience of managing finance if yes can you just raise your hands yes yes that's good which means we deal money when when i say uh, finance it is a big term you know it comes money your assets your uh, uh, your your uh, holdings and lot of stocks put together so uh, there is a lot of uh, part of our life wherein we spend understanding how do we manage this or how how do we even uh, uh, take control of the finance part of our life a lot of us uh you know really uh, goof up at the very initial stage and later on we realize you know if i would have done something at that stage i wouldn't have been in this situation you know like you know you you you, you can probably go back and look your parents life 
you know, uh, our older generation or our generation before us, you know, they were someone who was very careful with finances when it comes. Right now, the generation is, uh, is more about uh, the EMI generation, you know, wherein they believe in spending more and saving less and, you know, going into debt more and saving less. Back in the day when, uh, you know, your parents or my parents, they used to earn money, they would do a lot of planning and plotting around it. You know, they would, do, uh, they would do a monthly budget, they would do a, a monthly calculation, how and where to manage and how and uh, what to spend and what not to spend and where to spend and where not to spend. You know, somewhere that culture was really good and that was that at this point of time that is dried off or I, I would say, you know, it's taken over by the new generation, as I said, it's more driven by uh, you know, easy EMIs or credit cards or, uh, you know, easy payments, you know, which has made our life more easier, which has made our life more, uh, uh, I would say, comfortable in that case. You know, back in the day, if uh, my dad had to spend something on, 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 let's say, a furniture, dad and mom would plan for a year or two, you know, because those days there was no credit facility. You know, it was one-time payment. Do you, guys, do you guys remember something like that? Or are you guys too young for that? <laughs> no, not us, yes. Yeah, I, I remember like, uh, you know, uh, we, we had one television which, which, which I think it went on for 20 odd years. 20 odd years. I, I still remember when we bought the television. This was, uh, I think, in 91 or 92. You know, you have those, uh, earlier there was no flat screen, by the way, all you guys, there was no flat screen. You know, it was a big, big box, you know, big box. And there was no remote control for it. You know, we used to, yeah, it was a big, huge box. And we had those buttons, you know. To an extent, we used, you overutilized that the buttons would go away. And then you have to figure out, take a scale or a pen and then change the screen. <laughs> it, it was that. And, those days, if something happens to that television, it is, a, it is like a panic situation in the house because there is a bigger expense coming in. There is a, there is a, uh, you know, there is a, there's something going to happen in the house. You know, nowadays, it's easy, right? You buy a phone, iPhone, you buy it for uh, 80,000, 70,000, it comes with insurance, which means even if it happens, you can get it repaired, but it comes with its own extra cost. So can you see the, the, the movement or the change that has happened from one generation to another generation? It's rapid. It's happened, I believe, in last uh, uh, 15 to 20 years or maybe less than 25 years probably I can think about it. And it's even going further and it's even, uh, even going to an extent there and wherein you can get a loan within a matter of clicks. I, I'm, I'm, that's the fact. Two minutes, you know, they say 30 second loan or 10 second loan or two minutes loan. You know, we have to understand where we are heading at this point of time. You know, what, this is what exactly what God wants us to do. Because, you know, the facts or, or, or I would say uh, the figures or the statistics has shown, you know, it's not good for us. It's definitely not good for us. Just to, just to give you an instance, if you read about it, you know, way back in 1929, uh, I hope you guys understand the term when I say stock exchange, you know, it's called as a market, you know, that's where all the buying and selling of all the security happens. Now, every economy is driven by this market. Okay, I might probably give a lot of technical terms, you know, probably, uh, you know, can take that back and research, but I'll try to explain as much as possible. Let's say, in India, if you, have, if, you, if you heard about something called as, okay, let's take about US and America, that's more famous. If you heard about something called as New York Stock Exchange or there's something called as NASDAQ Index. In India, we have something called as Nifty or Sensex, BSE or NSE. You would have seen news, right? It, it says that it's going up or it's coming down. Now, whole of economy is connected to this index. Or, or I would say this market itself, which means if I have to analyze how is India doing right now, as far as uh, finance is concerned or economy is concerned, everybody would look on those index. You know, that's like a benchmark. Are you guys understanding benchmarks? You know, benchmark is basically something that we would 
value out you know so so if if someone who is trying to invest in india they would look at india's index which is you know bsc uh, sensex or nifty index and if they say if it's good it's fine now we can invest now what my point was way back in 1929 there was something called as a great depression you know it was the the worst of worst ever now of course we can understand back then we didn't have technology back then we didn't had uh, computers to analyze and you know give us graphs and give us statistics saying that this can happen you know that was a lesson learned but we still didn't learn the lesson you know what happened in 2008 2009 if you were around or if you had some sense of uh, you know markets and everything the markets again crashed you know it was very bad very bad in the sense after 20 um, 1929 it was the worst of worst which means if you had invested some money when i say invest let's say you have bought a share or a stock of a company by paying 100 rupees now why do you do investment you believe that investment would grow now if you had invested 100 rupees everyone's investment would have become like a 2 rupee or a 3 rupee which means there was a downfall of almost 80 to 90% in the market right and what happens after that what happens at that stage is if the economy doesn't functions well which means it resonate back to every individual which means there is no job which means prices are going to increase of all the products in the market you know that's another term which we call it as inflation in the market in there's inflation there's deflation you know when the prices really goes high and your purchasing power doesn't increases my salary doesn't increases every day you know but you know yesterday 1 kg tomato was 20 rupees all of a sudden it, get, it became like 65 rupees my my purchasing power from yesterday to today has it increased no but the price of the product that you're trying to buy in the market has gone up all of a sudden you know which 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 takes our economy or the world into a different zone altogether what happens you know there what happens after that people try to use substitutes let's say if they don't get tomato is there a substitute for tomato closest one okay okay maybe sauce is again from tomato so it will be equivalent x so what happens generally is they sort out more easy ways more more uh, you know cheaper ways which is more complicated which brings more trouble it can be easy for that point of time because i'm getting a substitute but if it goes a long run it will have adverse effect on our health or our or our mental state now i'm just trying to give you a frame of uh, you know just how it looks like we look everything fancy at the outside but if something goes really wrong it would have a significant impact on you and me what can you can you imagine what is the population of bangalore can anyone guess it any idea come on we should know this sorry more than 1 crore anyone else 8 crores okay 1 point 1.23 crores it's close to a uh, one and a half crore or 1.6 crore right now and out of which out of which 80% of the population is a population which falls under the category of 18 to 35 year old or 18 to 40 years old which is primarily the working force are you guys following what i'm trying to say which means this are the people who goes out does a specific job which is 9 to 6 whatsoever earns money gives it back to the home runs the home everything every activity now the earlier point which i was discussing if our economy goes towards the direction which it happened in 2000 uh, 1929 and 2008 this set of people would lose their job right which means they won't get money which means if there is no money it opens door for other problems you know which means there can be more fights on the road there can be more uh, you know what do you call that snatching and pickpocketing and what so because there is lack of money and you know studies says when there is a lack of money people go bizarre 
people go, go crazy. If you want to read about such instance which is happening right now, there's a country called as Venezuela, wherein the economy is so dried out that people don't have uh, money to buy food in the market. You know what they're doing? They're, they're catching those uh, rottens and ca uh, what do you say, the cats and the dogs and killing them and eating them. That's the mentality because they're gone bizarre because they don't have money and everything that they want to buy in the market is so expensive that they, d they can't afford it. If they want to buy probably one kg of tomato, they would have to probably spend one, one million dollar. I mean, that's, that's bizarre again because that is how expensive it is. So it's very necessary for us, you know, again, come back, coming back to us as a church, as a congregation, the age group that we are in, you know, we need to understand what is the right way. And as for, as for my understanding, if there is any right way, that has to be God's way. Are you guys, are you guys with me? That's what we, we are trying to understand out of this series. You know, as I said, I will put on a lot of facts, a lot of figures, you know, which might be a little confusing, but let's not take it as a sermon. You know, let's take it as a learning. You know, there are a few things which might be new, like the terms, but we can do a research anytime, right? Google is always free. Amen? Amen. All right, so I want to start off by, by reading uh, Philippians verse 4, 19. Can we read this together? Yes? No? All right, let's do this. And the same God who take care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Now, you know, this verse is, I would say, is the, is the heart of this uh, whole concept. Because it clearly shows, it clearly says that, you know, it's the same God who takes care of me and will supply all your needs from the glorious riches. Which means our God is super rich. You know, there is no comparison if I had to put down uh, Ambani or, or uh, you know, maybe, maybe another person who is at a top, top level. You know, there is no comparison. He is the richest person in the whole wild world. In fact, in fact, you know, a couple of weeks back, we learned that everything which is there in the world is His. So there is no doubt, you know, if, if, you, if you are His son or if you are uh, His daughter, you are equally rich. You are equally rich as your father is. Which means there cannot be lack. You know where problem begins? When we put a comparison in figures. When I say, that friend of mine has seven digit of salary and I still earn four digit of salary. God, God's definition of riches or rich is never in digits. You know, it's always what he already has given it to you. Is there anyone over here who doesn't have anything? God has given something or the, see, I'm not again talking from a money perspective. Uh, it could be, it, not, it is not necessary from material point of view. It is from, you know, it is from the heart, it is from the love of the God. Do you all believe we are sons and daughters of God? Which means, yes, we have enough. You know, which means we have more than enough what we should have. And God is give, has been giving us and he continues to give us forever and ever. Amen? So, can, come on, read that again. Come on, declare it and, and, and confess it over yourself. Come on, can we do that again? And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches. You know, which has been given to us in Christ Jesus. You know, which means again, God has that, uh, what do you call that? In, there's a term, right? God has that reserve. You know, every economy has a reserve, if you know, which means they have to maintain certain foreign currency within them so that if anything happens, they have to pull money, which, which by the way, we also need to have. We always should have some reserves in terms of money, in terms of uh, saving. That's another topic altogether. We're going to discuss that in some other day. But just like that, God is always taking money out of his rich reserves and he is providing it to you right now. Amen. Which means 
technically everything that i have right now today is god's possession which means everything that we own is directly from god amen, amen. what do you think what is providing you right now is it your business is it your job you know is it is it is it that jackpot that you have won just now is it are those things that is providing you right now let me let me tell you the job that you have the business that you have is not because of your capacity it's because god's capacity which he has overflown in you and me and that's the reason you know if you if you have to remove the element of god out of me i wouldn't have anything in my life so technically everything that i own everything that i work for my job my business is my career is has a direct ownership from god himself amen amen, amen. psalms 24:1 it says the earth is the lord's and everything in it the world and all its people belong to him he is the creator of heaven and earth you know genesis you know one says it right god created heavens and earth which means he has a sole proprietorship over you know this two boundaries and anything that comes underneath this is his you know yesterday me and pinal was traveling back from uh, mumbai and uh, luckily we got the window seat and you know as usual we were looking out you know what do you do in flight you look out and you you get amazed you know that's god's creation now that's do you guys do that or it's for not no, uh, like abnormal for me do you guys also do that right yes so we were just talking you know like um, and it was like i think it was around uh, we took flight around 5:15 so it was almost sun was setting and you know during that time you have a different color combination which you wouldn't see throughout the day you know it's probably a little mixture of yellow blue all col- colors put together and and in a stupid way i was saying you know that looks like cotton candy you know it it does look like a cotton candy do you, have you guys had cotton candy it just that i felt that it was looking like a orange cotton cotton candy and and then we started discussing about this and then we realized you know even this the simplest of simplest thing the beautiful of beautifulest thing that we can see out of this window is not something that you and i contributed it was created by god himself and how beautiful is that and how 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 special is that you know study says that you know if if you go more from the uh the nasa and all those studies there are there are tons of layers between different spaces now there are many spaces that they say there are many elements which runs within the space now study says that so far man had only identified 5% of it which means there are 95% of the space or those creation which is out there in different space or different heavens is still not discovered you know such is our god and here we are you know we we quite often crib you know we don't have that we don't have this we have everything because it comes directly from god himself amen now now which means whatever god has created he has entrusted into us our life not just not just uh, the elements that we see around but even the finances are you guys understanding even the finances or the money part of it god has set each one of us to be a money manager what do you mean by money manager have you heard this term called as fund manager at least fund manager in the market or or in the in the technical term what is it, yeah there's a mutual fund there's a concept called as mutual fund there is a fund manager what is the role of a fund manager any idea he's controlling the dividing the power has to invest where the money okay he controls the investment idea or investment pattern where to invest and how much to invest perfect what else what else is the responsibility is that the only responsibility other also when city loss 
Okay, so you have to make sure everything is in a right way. Let's take an example here. Let's say you guys uh, wants wants to make an investment. Okay, which means that you are saving, which is really good, and you have a certain portion which you believe that you want to invest. Assume for a minute that I'm your fund manager. Is that okay? Okay. I won't do anything with your money, okay? So, you come to me and you would say that, you know what, Joe, I give you every month 5,000 rupees. You invest the money in the market and you give me the return. Maybe I don't have the knowledge or I don't have the time to do all these things. You do that on behalf of me. Are you guys following with me? Yeah? So, what, what just happened? You just gave the whole hard-earned money into my hand. Which means, if you have to do that, you have to have some confidence over me? Yes. yes, no? Would you give your hard earned money to anybody on the road? You can't do that. Which means you agreed my terms and condition. You know, you agreed that this person is cap capable or this person has the capacity of giving some return. Yes, no? Yes. Now, what is my responsibility? I collect everyone's money. I gather it around. And what I'll do is I'll make a strategy around it. Where do I invest which can give me good returns? Are you guys following? What, do you understand investment, investment at least? Yes, FD or uh, fixed deposit or you investing into IPO or bonds whatsoever. You know, so that is up to me. Your duty was to come to me, give the money. I'll take the money. Let's assume that side is the market. I'll go to the market, invest your money and I'm supposed to give you the return back on a periodic basis. Now, I cannot guarantee you that, it depends on the market and over so, but forget about the returns. The very fact that you agreed that you would give me money shows a lot of confidence. Imagine the same way, God is telling you and me that you guys are my fund manager. That's what we read earlier, right? Because everything that we own is whose? Is God's, which means it's not mine. Which means God has already entrusted that part of our life into our hands, agreeing and believing that, you know, Partho can take care, or, or Penas can take care, or Kachi can take care. Which means it's a bigger responsibility over us. The money that we have, the finance part of our life which we have, has to be, you know, it has to have a lot of importance. It has to have a lot of understanding, just like, uh, you know, just like anything that we do. Because one thing we go wrong there, we, we, we might, we might, you know, you know, technically they say that you'll mess up things. So it has to be carefully managed. So which means we carry a responsibility because God is trusting us to be his money manager. Imagine God, um, you know, God has his reserves, you know, think about heaven, fast think about heaven, God is sitting there and he's allotting a certain share out of his riches into each one's name. How, how important is that for us to manage? Can we just blow it up? Can we just do any impulsive decision and just make the money go away? Um, or finances just go away? No. I need to take care in that careful manner. Let's read the next verse. 1 Corinthians 4.2 Now a person who is put in charge as a manager must be faithful. Come on, say faithful. Faithful, which means it has to be done in the right way. See, the blessings that we have in form of you know, the hard money that we earn or the possession that we have has to be managed faithfully. You know, I still really don't understand, uh, you know, that when there is, when you hear all these disputes which happens over land and businesses and money, because ultimately, we are going to go one day. Is that correct? We're not going to be here forever, right? We're going to go for sure one day back to where daddy is, which means, you know, all this dispute doesn't really make sense. You know, it's saying that the dispute still continues. The dispute still goes on and on. But the fact that the people who are involved in the disputes get to an extent saying that that is my share and I want it. 
that is not faithfulness that is greediness or that is that is something on another level you know which god doesn't really expect as i said whatever we need is already provided you know whatever we deserve is already allotted to you and me which means we have to manage it around if we are not faithful with our finances you know it's a sin it's just like any other sin which is there you know uh like let's just let's just for the example like how adultery in a life is a sin you know how murder in in a life is a sin and there is a punishable offense you know which comes along with it in similar context from god's point of view whenever we are not taking care of the finances or whenever we are not being faithful to god it is a serious offense can we can we you know can we desire or can we pray that you know god teaches lessons god teaches ideas to be a better money manager this season which means we would start managing our finances in a more uh, intellectual way you know and and there is a lot of lot of uh, value for you know people who manages money intellectually do you know fund managers you know this big people you know they earn millions and billions why because they just manage money of someone else just read just go back and read whenever you get time one of the world's wealthiest person is a fund manager what is his role taking care of others money if he can take care of others money why can't we and you do it yes no and there is a there is a bigger reward to it you know i'll give you this person's name his name is warren buffett you would have probably heard about it read about it uh, he is one of those crazy investors for over i think he's around 90 years old and he's been managing people's money since the age of 15 you know over this period of time he had managed money and created wealth so much that he had got a double reward over that he had got immense reward over that he is definitely there in the top 5 uh, you know richest people in the world now you might think it is very simple at the background oh what is that that is so easy but it's very important to manage it very faithfully now there are other fund managers who has been who had been unfaithful and they lost everything way back in 1960 there was this funny guy his name was charles charles i don't remember the entire name but uh, yeah charles ponzi that was his name so he was a fund manager he saw a lot of uh, uh, you know money in this business of managing money but he goofed up big time you know what he used to do he used to run a scam for example i'll take money from rashmi and i'll say that i'll give you 10 percent but i would use that money for my own purpose correct then i'll go to partho and i'll say that you know what i'll give you 10 percent i'll take money from partho but this time i'll pay you the 10 percent and the same way i use rest of money which partho gave me and this happened on and on and on and on finally he was caught and he was sent to the jail now there is a term which they called as ponzi scheme which means they just rotate the money and right still the the things like that still happens which means people who are unfaithful doesn't have any you know any uh, benefit or any any records directly from god because that is a serious sin amen are you guys with me yes no yes. are we understanding something or is it too heavy yes no yes. good yes. all right perfect ecclesiastist 11 for farmers who wait for the perfect weather never plant if they watch every cloud they never harvest you know like when we were preparing the slide i said spanas this is like a straight condemnation they never harvest okay let's read that again farmers who wait for the perfect weather never plant if they watch every cloud they will never harvest there is a connection between farmer and the cloud because if there are clouds that's a sign of rain correct 
but can a farmer you know do all the other things just by looking at the cloud no he starts preparing even before the season begins you know right now we are in summer you know slowly we are approaching towards monsoon you know towards the end of uh, end of summer farmers would actually start plowing their fields you know they would start preparing everything now they don't really wait and watch till the monsoon comes or till it starts raining why because it will be already too late all the process that should have happened in the window of summer and monsoon it's already gone are you guys following in similar way finance is also a such a important part of our life that earlier that we begin it is always best you know it always says right our parents would have already probably told you guys you start saving at the earliest age it's better you will save up at the end you will save up for the uh, you know uh, like a dark days or when you get retired you know that's actually somewhere so true because god always always god always promoted savings by the way you know god god had a different like jesus's life if you see was was very straightforward he went on to street without having anything but he also had a very uh, you know important message wherein he mentioned that it is really important to have uh, you know our right amount of saving you know that is again another concept which we'll discuss later but what i'm trying to say here is we push you know, generally we push you know to wait and see that one cloud to come and then start working just like uh, just like how we take insurance why do we take insurance do we project there would be something that is going to happen no we are trying to hedge our risk here so that if anything happens you know we are covered in that case you know if anything happens to my the possession my insurance is already covered in similar context god wants us to prepare right now you know rather than we be we becoming too old or probably in our 60s or 70s and then think about finance as we discussed the initial pattern how we are moving towards the economy which is living on emis and and easy cash it's right time you know for us to think what is god's way of finance you know what is the right way that god's god want us to you know treat finance or deal with finance a guy 28 the silver is mine and the gold is mine says the lords of heavens and army uh, we'll take the next one as well psalms 84:11 for the lord god is our sun and our shield he gives us grace and glory the lord will withhold no good thing from those who don't don't do what is right okay let's read that again for god for the lord god is our sun and our shield okay hold on now we discuss so far saying that you know we have to understand and we have to be aligned with what god is trying to say uh forget about the principles you know forget about uh, the the worldly uh, savings pattern and uh, you know the worldly ways of investing those all are important but more than anything you know the best saving that we can always have is that relationship that we share with our god because that relationship is something like a cover which is there throughout our life what does it says for the lord god is our sun and our shield which means he is already protecting us which means he is already you know giving us all those necessity by just establishing this relationship of sons and daughter i guess following so there is a emphasis which we have to understand how 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 this relationship is actually taking us to the next level you know it's just just the thing of we realigning to what god is trying to tell us you know it's like uh, you have enrolled into a policy without agreeing to the terms and condition or without learning terms and condition and we do that and again this generation is very quick on that i think everybody installs an app on their phone they ask a permission we give blindly all the permission without reading terms and condition I, do you guys do that yes, yes. what happens behind we don't really know we don't really care you know it's exactly like like we have this relationship established but what is the terms and condition we never you know we never had the time we never had uh, uh, we never had uh, 
the capacity to go through and read the terms and condition. So it says, Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. So it, it, it makes a perfect sense to have that relationship and you can still get lost. You can have the relationship and still don't understand God. So which means you have got to have relationship at the same time you need to have a perfect understanding of that relationship. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I can say this, you know, there can be uh, a husband and wife married, but they still don't understand the relationship if they don't connect to each other. That is quite possible. They can be in a worldly relationship which says that they're husband and wife, but when they don't work or function in a similar frequency, they don't have the meaning of the relationship which is there established. In similar context, if we have the relationship, we are saying that we are believer, we believer, but we don't really understand the terms and condition which comes with that, you know, it's still a contract which we didn't read at the time of sign, you know, when we, when we agree to the terms and condition. First Corinthians 6, 19. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You don't belong to yourself. Now, this again connects back to my initial point, you know, which we were discussing how, uh, you know, God has entrusted everything that he have or he has or he, he is owning right now into yours and my life. Moreover that, he is he's also aligning a helper or moreover that he is also aligning uh, is assistant to manage this finance which means he is making our work even more easy I guess following that what if let's say uh, you know now that I, I do a lot of budgeting because I have been aside you know with me I have better understanding of where to plan or what to plan I guess following back then when I was only doing myself okay I used to randomly plot it I didn't had a excel sheet which said this is monthly finance you know this much is for grocery this much is for food this much is for uh, you know traveling expense or fuel no I you know randomly whatever comes swipe it take it up there was no track there was no records but when you have a helper when you have someone who connects with the same ideology you can plan it even more better way. Do you guys agree to that? Yes? No? You know, which doesn't mean that all the individual guys and girls here, you cannot plan it better way. You can still plan it. You know, I was a little reckless when it came to, when it come to planning, you know. So, we, we have, a, you know, we have a person called as Holy Spirit who is constantly helping us to plan that. Who is constantly helping us to give giving that idea how do we manage our finance how do we go about our finance because again God is trying to remind us you know this is something that is mine I have given to you not just to you I also assign a helper to you which is nothing but the Holy Spirit how much more or how much uh, you know to an extent that we need anything now we have all the resource it's just that realigning everything in the right proportion makes our job more easy. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you this. Um, how many of you have gone bad with your finance? You know, literally messing up with your finance. Okay. 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 All right. In fact, can I tell you this? Everyone does it. Everyone has that one fall at least wherein they would mess things up, wherein they would, uh, uh, you know, they would say that, you know what, this is, this is, this is from God because I want to buy this, this is from God and you, when you end up buying, that's when you realize, no, this was not meant for me. You know, what I'm trying to say here is, we would have that experience of going it wrong. You know, if you have already had it, it's good. That is something as a learning experience that we can take. But let's look forward wherein we can partner with Holy Spirit and plan our finance even more in a better way. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Jesus reconnected us with our source. You know, when Jesus went back, 
he actually created a perfect economy. You understand economy again, coming back to what is an economy? Whatever we see around, you know, the, the finances or the, uh, you know, where there, is, where there is stock market, there is industry, there is uh, uh, every sort of employment happening, that is uh, economy. When Jesus went back, he actually created a perfect economy which didn't have any, any poor, poor understanding or any poverty or any lack or any, uh, anything which is bad in when it comes to finance. When Jesus went back, he corrected everything. He gave us that permission or the authority of saying that I correct or I create a perfect economy. Now, then that would again question you back. Why was there a recession? Why was there a great meltdown in 1929? Why did people lose jobs in 2008 and 2009? It comes back to the same concept where we failed managing finances the way God wanted us. So it's a reminder, you know, we already have a good economy, by the way. Why? Because when Jesus went back, he corrected everything. What happened after that was the management part that we did was not good or we did a very bad job, if I can say. So can we just remind ourselves, yeah, if, if I'm not saying, I'm not saying there is, uh, you know, it's, it's good to be poor or it's good to be, uh, you know, good to have lack. No, God never wants us to be, uh, you know, God never wants us to lack in anything. He always wants his abundance in yours and my life. What we have to do is just remind ourselves that, look back, you know, what Jesus did, you know, what Jesus corrected with regards to our economy. Can we go to the next slide? Can we read this together? The time promised by God has come at last. He announced the kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. Now, you know, this is, this is like, like a general gospel that we share every every way you know basically our understanding is that you know a kingdom is near or jesus is going to come back and you know he has done everything good it can be also connected to the finance as well because when i when he says the kingdom of god is near which means he has corrected everything he has he has taken care of all those problems already let's go to the next slide this is what lord says Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their heart away from Lord. This is where we forget what is our source or who is our source. I'll go back to the same point. Your source is not your job. Your source is not your business. Your source is not even that foreign investment that is coming from another country no your real source your true source is our god himself Amen. now you know we are in a generation where we depend on a lot of sources you know which means the biggest biggest thing that worries this generation is lack of wi-fi and less battery do you guys agree to that i i, I couldn't stay in my house when there was no wi-fi that was, like, that was like a painful moment for me because I don't know what to do if there is no Wi-Fi. I, I, I cannot do anything in a house when there is no Wi-Fi because technically whole our world is run, it, it runs and revolves around Wi-Fi. You know, it worries more, you know, like when the battery is about to die rather than having less cash in your pocket. Do you guys agree that? You all go through the same emotion. You know, forget about all these silly things, but even if the battery is dying, even if there is no cash, even if there is no Wi-Fi, let's agree and believe that our biggest source and biggest uh, source of all time is God Himself. Amen. Everything that we need is fulfilled and taken care by our Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you guys stop worrying if there is no Wi-Fi? Would you guys stop worrying if there is no battery on your phone? Yes, I, I try to. I want to encourage you guys because I'm still learning. Uh, this happened like last week. All of a sudden, Wi-Fi went off. I said, "Okay, it's any which is late night. It'll be fine by tomorrow morning." The first thing that I 
checked in the morning was Wi-Fi. It's still not there. Okay, it started troubling my heart. Okay, I said, okay, let me go to work. Let me come back. By the time, I'll be fine. It didn't came. When I came back, the Wi-Fi was still not there. And, and I started complaining. I, started, I had to raise a complaint. You know, in that process, you know what happened? I lost my peace. Because then I have to sit down and realize that, you know, Joe, you don't have to rely on a, a mere Wi-Fi to have a stable mind. It is your God. It is a, it is, it is a, so the right source has to be God. Not this silly things. Not this, you know, mere humanly things. You know, that's what it says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. You know, there is a supernatural capacity when we involve God in our daily life. You know, something that I really uh, learn and I really appreciate Pastor Priji and Pastor Rashmi. Uh, you know, that was uh, when Pastor Ashok uh, passed away and I remember, you know, we, three of us, went into the hospital uh, and, and we started praying. We started praying and I'm, to be honest, I've never done something like this. You know, and th this person is dead and, you know, we were agreeing that there would be some change, there is some movement in that person. And I was, I was, I was actually, uh, you know, I was taken aback looking at their faith. You know, when Pastor Priji and Pastor Rashmi said, let's pray, let's believe that there would be a movement in a body. Now, this, this body is dead. This body is dead for over an hour and there's, there are two people who are agreeing to pray. And that really changed my faith in terms of understanding, you know, if I go God's way, things can change. Things can move. You know, I'm not saying that that thing happened that day, but, you know, that really gave me a faith. You know, if I'm in the situation next time, I won't really just give up. I would involve God and try to make things. You know, I don't re I'm not going to really trust uh, or put my faith in a mere doctor or a report or, 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 or an expert because that is limited. You know, that is, that is a human way. Let's try and agree God's way. If your finance is bad, if you're dealing uh, with a problem which is related to your finance, let me encourage you. Let's not put a person's opinion. Let's not take a fund manager's opinion. Let's not take a fund accountant opinion. Let's take our God's opinion. It is going to shift. It is going to change. It is definitely going to change your perspective around those things. And, and you know, I, it, it really did change my perspective uh, that night. So thank you so much for doing that. Okay, that's a continuation of the earlier slide. Can we read that from verse 5? Can we all read it together? This is what the Lord says, Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, not rely on human strength, and turn their hearts away from the Lord. 6. They are like stunt shrubs in the desert, with no hope for future, they will live in the barren wilderness in an uninhabited, salty land. That would be the result. You know, if we put our trust in your, mere humans and, you know, reports and doctors and not understanding the supernatural power that our God carries, we would be just like that shrub which is there in the desert which is just going to go away. Amen. But what Bible teaches us what we have to do is is verse 7. But blessed are those who trust. Come on, read it together. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a river bank with roots that reach deep into the water, such as trees are not bothered by heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. Can you see two perspectives how it is explained? You know, there is, there is this, um, you know, there is this small shrub or plant which is there in the desert, you know, and desert is a very harsh place. You cannot rely on desert to get nourishment because there is no nourishment in the desert. 
Now what God is trying to tell us, if we depend on mere human tendency and human belief or reports or all those human ways, we are going to be like that shrub which might just get, you know, get burned in the heat, in the, in the heat of the desert. However, what God is trying to say here is, you know, be like those blessed people who trust the Lord and have made Lord their hope and confidence. Even in my poverty, if I have that hope and confidence, if I have that trust factor with God, you know, I can be still happy with having nothing. I can be still have, have everything without having nothing in my bank account. You know, I can, I, can, I can be the happiest person in the whole world without having a single rupee in my bank account. Can you, can, you, can you understand that? Blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. What was happening here? They were putting their hope and confidence in mere human ways. But the moment I shift my mentality, you know, from mere human ways to God's supernatural way, Without having anything, I can be still happy. Without having nothing, I can still be happy and I can be glad like never before. Amen. Amen. So, you know, it, it's not really about how much of money we have in our bank balances. It's not about how much of possessions or asset that we have. It is, it is, it is showing the faith that even if I have this much, I can still be happy like you know, those people who are, you know, wealthy and billionaires. Amen. Amen. So, what do you think? Who is our real source? God is our source. You know, that's, that's my message today, you know, in, in precise that. Let's take our focus away from all those human ways, you know, which is trying to say that, you're bad, you don't have enough finance, you don't have enough capacity, but let's look at it from a supernatural way what God is trying to put. The moment we make God our source, we have everything. The moment we make God our only source, we have everything that we need. And I'm telling you, it, you can actually, that's what I said, we can actually practically apply this. You know, this is not just like anything you know we we learn and we forget but these are practical things that we can apply you know and this is not only for people who are earning or uh, you know who has money to manage even for young kids you know even for people who are there in colleges you know this is something that we can learn right now and make it as a practice and make it as a principle the day when you start earning you are already realigned with the principle that god has already set which means you're already managing your finance God's way. Amen. Amen. Did we learn something today? Did we, un, you know, did we, can we practically apply something here? You know, probably the example of supernatural connection that I can have God, wherein I have nothing and can still have everything. That's something that we can actually, you know, go forward and look into our life. Let's, let's pray and believe that, you know, not just our church, you know, let's pray that the church is across, you know, there are churches which, uh, which doesn't really manage finance the way it should be managed. Let's agree and realign, you know, with the prayer saying that everyone, everyone around would have the same capacity of aligning finances the God way, the God's way or the godly way. Because God is our only source. God is our only source.